Hi there, my name is Nils with Learn to DIY, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what I learned when I went out and spent $7,000 on four different UHD 4K projectors to compare their image quality, their features, and certainly <laughs> their size. So let's take a look and see what we learned along the way, and hopefully we can help you make a decision on which projector is right for you. The first thing I want to go over is how I chose the projectors that I chose. So what I did is a lot of homework. I went to multiple websites. I tried to mostly focus on current projectors, things that came out in the last year or two. What I would still consider consumer level projectors. So things that range um, up to about $2,500. And that's kind of a lot to spend for a projector. But in some cases, I mean, depending on who's watching this, you may think that's a lot or a little. Um, but I wanted to find out kind of what's the, on the lower side, more the consumer friendly brands, the consumer friendly models of projectors that are out there today. So I compared about 12 or 13 projectors, created a spreadsheet. If you head on over to my website at learntodiy.com and I'll put a link in the description, you can see all of the specs that I came up with. And I, I came up with all kinds of stuff. I wanted to find out, do they zoom? Uh, all of the, the basics first, you know, what are their lumens? What's their contrast ratio? Making sure uh, what the resolution is. I did a lot of research on the difference between 4K, native 4K, uh, full 4K, and then what's called faux K. Looked at bulb life, bulb replacement cost. Uh, looked at different things like um, what are their review ratings on Amazon and on other websites. Um, how big can their screens go at what throw distances, things like that. So all kinds of stuff. Check that out on the website if you want to learn more. And that includes the information for these four. So the four that I ended up going with range from 1000 to $2,100. Maybe by the time you're watching this, those prices will be different. But the three brands that I was specifically focusing on were Epson, ViewSonic, and Optima. And so you'll see that there's actually a lot of um, consistency in brands. So even if you don't end up going with the models that I'm showing here, hopefully showing you this will give you an idea for what you can expect when you purchase one of these brands. So I did a lot of research on these AV forums, talked to people who are really into projectors and really get this stuff, and most of them really talked a lot about this one projector called the Epson Home Cinema 5040 UB, saying that this was like the one to compare to, especially in that price range, and that everything kind of went up from there as far as price. Uh, but in this price, price range, this is supposedly one of the best ones you can get. The UB stands for ultra black. It's got a great contrast ratio, actually a million to one. So that's the first one I started with. The second one, a lot of talk about the newer model for that one, which is the Epson 4010. So I also purchased the 4010, which was about $300 less, coming in at about $1,800. And then I also purchased an Optima. I have an Optima right now as my 1080p projector, and I really like it. Um, it's cheap, but it does a great job, and I've been really happy with it. So I purchased the Optima UHD 60. And then the last one I bought to bring down the cheapest one that I could find, basically, this one was $999, and that's the ViewSonic, and that's the PX747. So that one was $999, and we're going to take a look at each of these. So one of the first things I noticed about these projectors that I wasn't expecting is the size difference. Look at the size of this thing. These Epsons are mammoth. I'm a consumer level guy. I have a normal little projector, 1080p. The thing's probably, you know, this big, just a normal size projector or what I consider to be normal. So I was not expecting these huge Epson projectors and they are really large. They're, they're probably two to three times bigger than a standard projector. Now, another thing with that is these larger project projectors, they don't use keystoning. So keystoning is this effect where you have a trapezoid essentially. So ideally your picture is square or rectangle. Um, with your 16 by 9 ratio, or there's other ratios as well, but you can actually tilt them out a little bit. So when you're angling it down, you can adjust the, the width of the top or the bottom of the image to make it still present as a rectangle or a square in your, on your projector screen. So that's not an option with these larger ones because they use something else called lens shift. Now what lens shift is, is it actually, there's a stationary lens in the front that all of the images come out of. That's the one we actually can see. But inside the machine, there's actually movement that can happen. There's motorized lenses, which is super cool. Um, but you can actually move the picture around and that way you can adjust where your image sits on your, on your theater wall. So you can have it go up, down, left, right. You can zoom in, zoom out. And these Epsons have, from what I've seen, just about the best 
lens shift and the best zooming capabilities of anything out there. So on the Epson's, the lens shift actually has a capability of moving vertically 96%, so nearly 100%. In other words, if you have it all the way up at the top, you can use the remote control to move the, the picture that's um, projected out almost all the way down 100% below itself, 96%. And then horizontally, you've got a 47% uh, shift, so you can move quite a bit left to right. So very impressive as far as getting that set up. On the Optima projector, that one has a little bit of lens shift. It's manual, there's a little knob in there to handle that. It doesn't shift quite as much. Um, it's a vertical lens shift only, and it's 15%. So it's more of an adjustment, um, not for larger moves or anything like that. And then on the least expensive, the ViewSonic, it does not have any sort of lens shift. It does have keystone capabilities, more like what you'd expect on a lower end projector. Um, that's what I've got on my 1080p projector. I've got the ability to use um, keystoning and it, I don't know, I kind of think it's all right. Just keep in mind though, with keystoning, what you're doing is you're manipulating the actual pixels there. So it's trying to interpolate these pixels that aren't there. So it's kind of like using digital zoom a little bit. There's no real extra pixels showing up there. You're just zooming in on the pixels that are already present. Um, it's not like optical, which is what lens shift is, so that you can actually get the full resolution no matter where the picture is. So one of the other things that I noticed right away was the size of the remotes. They're very different. On the Epsons, they use this really large remote here. This thing is pretty huge. Don't know if you care about that, but they're definitely different types of remotes. And there are a lot more features by, by far on the Epson as far as the things that you can do to control the projector versus either of the others. The Optima remote is like this little um, flashlight and so it's quite bright. All right, so let's get to the good part. Let's take a look at the actual image differences in these projectors. This is really all that matters, right? We're really, when it comes down to it, the remote is great, the size of these things may be relevant, but what really matters is how good of a picture do we get? When you're watching a movie, when you're playing a 4K game, um, when you're watching something that's epic and meant to be epic and was really well filmed, do you get to appreciate it? Do you see the best version of it that you can see? So just a little bit about my setup here so that you can kind of get a feel for how comparable is this setup to what you might see or have at your home. So my projector screen, it's one I built myself, and if you wanna check that out, there's a link in the description of how to build your own high-end uh, projector screen that has a great image. So this one is uh, 12, just shy of 12 feet. It's 142 inches diagonally, and 16 by nine ratio. And then where I sit is about 15 feet away from the screen. So the screen, about 12 feet, sitting 15 feet back, and then the projectors, the lens of the projectors in all, all of the cases that I tested with was right at about 16 and a half feet, about 16 foot six. So uh, that's the different, or that, those are the distances that I was using in this case. And I tested in two sets of scenarios. I tested with the lights fully on. I'm in my basement here and I put a lot of can lights in my basement when I built it because I wanted it nice and bright down here. Um, right now, for example, um, I'm not using any studio lights or anything like that. This is just the actual lighting. So you can see it's pretty bright. And then I also tested it completely black. I've got blackout curtains and I made sure everything was pitch black when testing it. And that's obviously the optimal viewing situation. So I took some 4K footage that I saw from Sony. They actually did kind of this sampler of this African safari wild animal footage. Very, very well shot. It's all gorgeous footage very crisp, very sharp, and really shows off the details of 4K. So that's what we're gonna use as the first sample. I'm gonna show you kind of side by side exactly what each of these looks like. And then I took one of my own uh, DIY videos where I was building the clubhouse that's out in my backyard. And so I, that's, that was all shot in 4K. So I took some sample clips from that and shot those on each of the, or showed those on each of the 4K projectors as well. So I had lots of footage to go off of, and I'm mostly gonna focus on this 4K sampler footage by Sony, because it's beautiful. It really is kind of show off material for these projectors. So what we're looking at here is the 4K sampler image. I, in post, I went ahead and lined up all of the footage just right. I tried to get it as close as I could with the camera. I'm using all manual camera settings, and my objective here was to try to capture on camera what my eyes were seeing. For example, with exposure, if this projector was really bright, I wanted to make sure that I had my camera settings to such that it matched what I was seeing uh, in person. So that was the attempt, that was the goal here, was to try to get that as close as I could in each of these scenarios. And then I even went and adjusted it slightly in post just to make sure it was true to life. 
I wanted you guys to see what I saw when I sat down in front of it, not just how the camera picked it up, but how my eyes really saw it, as if you were watching it in person. So this is the comparison. So um, on the left, we've got the 5040 UB. Next to that is the 4010. Next to that is the Optima and then the ViewSonic. So you can kind of see these are in price range or price order basically, left being the most expensive, right being the least expensive. And some of the things I noticed right away were on the least expensive one, the $999 ViewSonic, the colors, the saturation, the, the richness of the colors just wasn't there. It was just lacking. So I would, I, I kind of automatically ruled that one out. It just wasn't, especially if you see these side by side or if you're used to a good crisp uh, vivid image. This is not a vivid image. It's it's flat. Um, it's kind of dull and it's just lackluster. It, it kind of ruins the experience a little bit of having 4K. Resolution wise, it looks sharp. It looks good, but it just doesn't have the ability to provide the experience of the colors and the contrast and the richness that these other projectors do. So, uh, if you're if you're looking around, I would avoid the bottom of the line ones. I have heard the ViewSonic has one that's uh, three or four hundred dollars more. That's got a better um, richness to the colors and everything like that, but I've also heard that ViewSonic in general as a brand is one that you might want to stay away from. Now the contrast ratio on the least expensive one, this ViewSonic here, is actually only 12,000 to one, which is quite a bit less than all of its siblings here, all of its competitors. The Optima, for example, is a million to one, which is as good as you can find out there in this price range. Um, so is the Epson 5040UB, and then the Epson 4010 is actually a 200,000 to 1 contrast ratio. And I, I will say I didn't really notice much of a difference between those last three. The, the three more expensive ones all seem to perform very similarly as far as the, the richness of the blacks and the contrast in general. So a million to one versus 200,000 to one, didn't notice a big difference. 12,000 to one, you could kind of tell there. That, that $999 one, contrast ratio was not that impressive. So keep that in mind. Now with the Optima, it was a little bit oversaturated. I have an Optima now for my 1080p projector. And on that one, um, it's a little bit oversaturated, but it's not crazy. It's not totally blown out. And it looks really sharp, actually. It provides a nice, bright, vivid colors. Your reds look nice and red. Um, if you look at these, the strawberry footage, for example, that's kind of a showcase sampling um, of what 4K can look like and what a good projector can do. And that looks so much better on the Optima than it did on the ViewSonic, for example. But what I did find is that on the Epsons, it looked more true to life. It's like what I would expect to see in person um, with my bare eyes was what the Epson represented best. So that, that's why I think the price difference there is for the Epsons, it's worth paying a little bit more to get more of a realistic view of what things look like. So I thought that did the best job at representing reality um, and really displaying that and kind of showing off the footage that you're watching on your 4K projector. I'll just let this roll for a little bit so you can kind of see for yourself. Again, I've done my best to make each of these realistic and hopefully this helps you to see the differences in the colors and the brightness um, both during the day and at night with some lights on, with a lot of lights on actually, and then in an optimal setting with all of the lights off pitch black. Now another thing I did is I zoomed in uh, using a telephoto lens with my camera. I'm shooting with a Panasonic Lumix G85 which shoots beautiful 4K footage. And so I'm trying to get the close-up version of this. Can you see the pixels? Can you see clarity? Can you see detail right up close? This is not representative of what you'll see as you're sitting on a couch watching a movie. But I just wanted to do kind of a more scientific uh, close-up to see really when you get right down to it, what can you see or not see in the difference in these. Now one thing I found really interesting is that the two less expensive projectors here, the ViewSonic and the Optima, those are both true 4K. So they have full 4K resolution, while the Epsons both use what's called Faux-K. That's a nickname given to these projectors where they take three um, CCDs, they take three chips, and they actually 
um, project them all 1080p at the same time and they put them together and they offset them all a little bit so it kind of creates sub pixels basically and so the the illusion of pixels basically as they overlap I don't fully understand I don't know that many people really totally get how this works it's pretty fascinating but what I found is that when you look at this 4k versus 4k as far as clarity crispness resolution I'm not seeing a lot of difference these I mean this is pretty deceptive that this is not actually 4k on these Epson's it looks really sharp it looks really good so if you're worried about these 4k ones that Epson does um, there's some other brands that do that as well 4k actually looks really good uh, it's not anything I would complain about it's nothing that I can really even see the difference very obviously if you zoom way in like this you can maybe tell if you know what you're looking for but when you're just watching this, it just looks crisp. It looks really sharp, it's tack sharp, beautiful. If you're looking at a regular viewing distance, I don't think you're gonna notice much of a difference. And again, that's me, one man's opinion. Uh, you may be someone who's really trained and can really see that difference and detect it. For me, it really just looked the same between 4K and 4K. All right, so in conclusion, uh, one of the questions you probably will want to know is, what do you like? What did I find best after watching all four of these watching lots of different footage on each of these and kind of playing around and getting a feel for each one. So, uh, brand wise, I noticed a couple things. I have an Optima and I uh, purchased this 4K Optima. They're both a little too saturated for me. There's too much color that they're trying to pump in there and it makes it a little bit, a little bit um, artificial. Uh, it just doesn't seem like, it seems like they're trying too hard almost. And you can adjust those and play with those settings a little bit, but no matter what, you're starting with a pre-saturated image. Um, it's not bad. It's not like, you know, I wouldn't want to watch something on it, but it's not as good as the other, as the Epsons in particular, for example. On the ViewSonic, um, not interested. The colors are flat. The contrast is not great. It just, especially when you can compare them, you can really see it's just not uh, ideal. It, it's not something I would buy. Yes, it costs a lot less. I think it's worth paying more to get a better image um, for your, your movie nights and your theater experience. So uh, obviously that kind of leaves us with the Epsons. I really don't like how big these things are. Not a big fan of that. They're big, they're heavy, they're bulky. But that said, the Epson 4010 would be my choice. When you're looking at the image quality, when you're looking at the contrast ratio, despite the fact that there's a huge difference in the numbers at least, the, the specs on the contrast ratio, didn't notice really any difference between the Epson 4010 and the 5040 UB. Now some of you out there, if you've looked at these, you may say, oh, that's, you know, that's garbage. Uh, obviously you're blind and that kind of stuff. Maybe that's the case, I don't know. I have good vision. Uh, for me, I just didn't see any real advantage with the 5040 UB versus the 4010. And I really liked how the 4010 looks in general. It's actually a few hundred dollars cheaper. Uh, the price varies on these quite a bit, of course, but uh, at least at the time of purchase, $300 less than the 5040 UB. I really like it. So that's the one I'm gonna end up keeping. So if you actually want to uh, purchase any of these or learn more, of course, check out the uh, link that I mentioned before to learn to DIY on my website. And to learn more about that, you can see that get the link right to it in the description. You see all the specs and everything compared. And then if you do end up purchasing any of these, I would really appreciate if you use the affiliate links that I've got down in the description below, as well as on my website. Affiliate links just means that you pay the exact same price you would anyway, but I get a, a small commission on that and it just helps out the channel. Uh, if you wanna follow along with the other projects that we're doing, I don't usually do home cinema stuff, but I do a lot of uh, projector related stuff, hiding your TV wires, um, home improvement projects, woodworking projects, all that fun stuff, just whatever I'm doing around the house, uh, building my basement like I built here, things like that, then you can check us out on Instagram or on Facebook and then subscribe to the channel. And if you hit that little bell, you'll get notified every time I come out with a new video. So be sure to hit that and that'll keep you up to date every time something new comes out. So thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something new and feel free to leave your comments or questions in the uh, comments section below and we'll do our best to get back to you. So thanks again. My name is Nils and thanks for watching Learn to DIY.